one for your patience. As you know, we're working. <laughs> we're trying to work very hard with the uh, hotel staff to ensure a safe evening, but most important, an evening where there's an opportunity for everyone's voice to be heard. The objective tonight is to share some ideas, share some dialogue, and give an opportunity for each of the tables to have some input. And we've got a packed house. I don't think anybody expected uh, this many folks to show up, which is wonderful. So thank you all for coming out on a rainy evening. Thing. And thanks to Terry, my 10-year-old uh, daughter was playing soccer in the rain. And I took a pass and said to the assistant coach, i got to go to a meeting, so you're, uh, you're in charge. My objective here is, is uh, to help speed things along and, and keep things moving as uh, efficiently as possible, to, but to maximize the minister's time, to maximize everybody's time. So my first, uh, first task here is to introduce a friend, uh, and Terry Duguid. And uh, Terry Duguid, is, as we all know, was elected in 2015. Terry is a community person who's had a long-standing uh, record of service in our community that goes back 25 years. He holds two degrees. A bachelor's degree and a master's degree in environmental science. He was a Winnipeg counselor. Do you want me to announce that? No, no. <laughs> he was quietly saying he was from the University of Calgary. <laughs> he knows where I work. Same as Stephen Harper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, one thing people might be aware that Car uh, Terry also served as a counselor from 1989 to 1995. And just to share one personal story, I interviewed Terry about, uh, as a Unita reporter for the uh, University of Winnipeg uh, student paper way back in the uh, late 80s. I did interview Terry for um, a student travel pass, a transit pass back in the day. And, and I'll say that Terry was the only counselor at the time that actually supported and saw merit in, in subsidizing uh, the transit passes for students at the time. And it's taken uh, several decades later to, uh, to get that through. Terry was also instrumental in the Blue Box uh, program that uh, now runs quite efficiently, although we still debate organics, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. He's worked in all kinds of things, water conservation, environmental file, and most recently uh, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Terry um, at the University of Winnipeg in the, the Northern Sustainability Prosperity Initiative that uh, Terry was the director of and did a lot of work up north and in our community here, so it was uh, quite, uh, quite a great honor to work with him. So without that, without further uh, accolades to Terry, I'll uh, give, give the podium to him. Thanks, Terry. Well, thanks, Gino. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, wow, what a crowd tonight! And thank you so much uh, for your uh, for your patience. Can everybody hear back there? Yeah. Good, 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 good. And uh, I want to start by acknowledging that we are on Treaty One uh, land in the heart of the Métis Nation. In fact, we have uh, uh, MMF uh, President uh, David Chartrand. Where are you, David? David. Hello. 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 Chief Jim Bear. Where are you, Jim? Hello. 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 Hello discussion tonight on what I think is really the defining issue of our generation, and, and that, of course, is the issue of climate change. And what a great honor it is for me to uh, have in, in my community of Winnipeg South, uh, Catherine McKenna, the Environment and Climate Change uh, Minister, uh, who played uh, such a key role in getting us to uh, Paris and getting an agreement there, and also has put uh, climate change front and center before our parliament. But uh, I think uh, Catherine would be the first to agree. Now the hard part uh, begins. Uh, action on climate change, including reducing emissions, making that uh, transition to a clean economy as fast as possible. I know some of you feel very, very strongly about that, and so do we. Uh, and also not forgetting about uh, climate change adaptation and building resilient communities, because we know, particularly those people in our north, that climate change is with us already. And while the federal government is back at the table and playing a leadership role, uh, we can't act alone. We need to work with provincial and territorial governments, we need to work with indigenous communities, civil society, uh, business, uh, municipal governments, uh, and we need to have some 
frank conversations, as I hope we'll have tonight, on just what is required, what, what form should that action take. Uh, now, for a decade, uh, those conversations simply did not happen. Uh, consultations uh, like tonight were really a rarity if they happened at all. The Prime Minister did not meet with the uh, Premiers uh, to talk Turkey. Uh, none of this happened over the last decade. Uh, so tonight is an opportunity for you to hear from our Environment Minister, but, but most importantly, our Environment Minister wants to hear from you. I hear about what the, the challenges are, the challenges that you see on the horizon, but also the opportunities of moving to that uh, clean and green uh, community. And uh, I see some folks in the audience who are already working on that uh, clean, green economy. And Manitoba, as all of you know, has some really, really uh, unique opportunities, abundant hydropower, geothermal leadership in electric vehicles, and of course, uh, preservation of our great uh, boreal forest uh, to our north. Uh, so enough. Uh, <laughs> Enough, uh, enough from me at the podium. Uh, it's time to turn to our special guest who has had a very distinguished uh, career before politics. I'll be very brief, but uh, Catherine McKenna has practiced law at leading firms in both Canada and Indonesia, focusing on international trade, competition, investment, and constitutional issues. She was senior counsel for the UN mission in East Timor, which culminated in the Timor Sea Treaty. Catherine co-founded and was executive director of Canadian Lawyers Abroad, a charitable organization that engages in the developing world and Canada in the areas of good governance, rule of law, environmental issues, and human rights. She was executive director of the BAM Forum that engages emerging Canadian leaders in critical public policy discussions. And prior to that, uh, she taught at the University of Toronto's Monk School of Global Affairs and was a board member at the Trudeau Centre for Peace and Conflict. Uh, Catherine, uh, I think her most uh, her proudest accomplishment is that she's the, the mother of uh, three uh, beautiful children, which I've seen pictures of, and, uh, and, and is uh, very happily married, I understand her. Still? That's <laughs> 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 my, my I give you Catherine McKenna. <laughs> And those of you in the back, can you hear me? Yeah. Yay! All right. Uh, it, you know what? It's so amazing just seeing so many of you here. We have a, a, I've got a tough job. We've got a tough job in Canada. The world's got a tough job, but we're all in this together. So I thank you for coming out. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that we're on, on Treaty One territory in the homeland of the Métis Nation here in Winnipeg. We know that Indigenous peoples. Uh, are really uh, on the front lines when it comes to climate change. They're seeing the impacts, it's changing the way of life, and we need to be taking action together, working uh, with our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, why, why am I going around the country having these conversations? Um, it's because we need to be taking serious action to tackle climate change. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk uh, before, um, but now uh, the rubber's got to hit the road. Um, I have to say uh, a big thank you to Terry. I'm really lucky to uh, to be um, sitting in a caucus with so many people uh, who care deeply about climate change. They care about sustainability issues and are committed to working really, really hard. Uh, Terry has an amazing background uh, working in the, you know, the area of sustainability and he really cares about the issue and it's so great uh, that he's taken the time to, to have me here uh, to host uh, this tonight. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go through uh, a little slideshow. You actually don't really need to see the slideshow. I, you know, I'm, have, I'm just going to chat really. Um, and then I think the rules, uh, I don't know, we, where's our moderator? I'm not sure if I'm going to go through, uh, do, 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 do you want to explain sort of the, the kind of like the rules, not the rules, but how, how we'll operate? So we have a lot of folks here and I want to make sure that I hear from you. This is what it's really about. It's really about hearing from Canadians about what actions you think we should be taking in terms of tackling climate change, what opportunities, what opportunities are there, and what challenges are there, and how do we get through them. Uh, we're resilient people. Uh, we certainly uh, know how to cope with challenges and move forward, and I just think it's really important that we do it together. 
So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, start the slideshow. So the slide, have your say. Well, there you go. Uh, so what's important about the slide, and I'll repeat it at the end, uh, is that we also want to we want to hear from you today. But you're also we also want to encourage as many people as possible, uh, and that's everyone from experts down to kids to actually submit your ideas to uh, our interactive website. And why is that important? Because I believe in transparency. I want to make sure that all of your good ideas get up there, that people can search them, people can see them, that everyone has a chance to see them, that premiers see them, um, and that my counterparts, environment ministers, see them. And that's the best way to do it. And so it doesn't matter who you are, no one's special in this. We, we're asking everyone uh, to do that. Um, all right, next slide. I'm not the one person who can't see the slides. Uh, <laughs> like maps or something. Uh, that's a that's a pretty scary map there. Uh, so climate change, climate change is real. Uh, I think we're hopefully no climate change deniers in this room. Uh, oh, there's, you're pointing at someone. Oh, I can see it there. So I thought you were pointing at climate change denier. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next problem. It's worse. If there's anyone that has some concerns, we can just show you. There's a presentation that we did to the premiers. We can all just get you in another room. But I assume you're here because you believe climate change is real, and we need to take action. So that's the good news. So uh, the great news is we're not alone. It's not just you guys in this room. It's 195 countries came together in Paris to negotiate an ambitious agreement. And lest you think that was easy, it was not. There were a lot of late nights. Uh, it was very unclear that we were going to get an agreement, uh, in large part because uh, developing countries often felt that you know they were you know the ones having to pay for uh, the, the the changes that they you know that that were being seen on you know their territory. That that some you know we have small island states that are that are literally go literally going underwater. Um, but everyone came together. Uh, we we helped provide support. Canada announced 2.65 billion dollars uh, to developing countries to help support climate action, both mitigation and adaptation, which was part of. Uh, part of uh, the getting them to the table. Uh, and we got an ambitious agreement where we said that we, we understood but on the science we needed to get below two degrees, striving for 1.5 degrees. Uh, and every country made commitments. Uh, and every country agreed, and this is really important, that they would come back five years, every five years would do better. Because the reality is we're not there yet. We don't have a plan in Canada yet. That's why we're working hard, and that's why we're doing these consultations to figure out how we're going to meet our, our target or exceed our target. Um, but we're all going to need to do better. Uh, so let's see. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm really, I'm really so old. I can't see things. Uh, I think it was a slide before that. Did it just? Um, so I mean, we're already experiencing climate change. This will be no surprise for uh, for any of you here. Whether it's severe flood, severe flooding uh, that we're seeing, droughts. Uh, we know that permafrost is melting. Uh, and as I said, uh, for indigenous peoples, I mean, they're really the ones that are being impacted the most, especially in our north. When I talk to uh, my, my friends uh, who live, uh, you know, in Nunavut or, or live in the territories, I mean, it's actually changing their way of life. It's not an inconvenience. Uh, when, you're, uh, when your ice roads uh, are, are only around for a much shorter period, it means you can't see your relatives. Uh, we're seeing species, you know, become much harder to find. So caribou species that you would rely on uh, for for your traditional foods. So that increases food insecurity, which is already a big problem. Um, so these are, you know, these are real challenges. PEI is uh, receiving by 43 centimeters a year. That's the average. So we are seeing the impacts here, and I think that's really important that we talk about it. It's not some abstract concept that we're seeing, you know, in other places or something we have to worry about. Uh, you know, 50, 100 years down the road, it's already happening right now. Uh, and we're just going to see it, it's going to increase. And in Canada, uh, the, uh, we're double the uh, world average when it comes to temperature increases. So we're at about 1.6 degrees. Temperature is already increased by. Uh, that's even more in the north. So. Uh, so this is something I spent a lot of time looking at. So this is a really important chart. Uh, where do our greenhouse gas emissions come from? Uh, you know, because if you're going to actually figure out what your plan's going to be, you need to know where you have to make changes. Uh, so if you look at that, uh, you can see oil and gas. Uh, that's where uh, it's at, sorry, 25%. Then uh, you've got electricity, you've got transportation, you've got um, buildings, 
And, and so, I mean, there's a, this isn't magic. Uh, there are just areas where we know our emissions are coming from and where we know we need to get reductions. And that's really what I'm hoping you'll do, you'll help us do tonight. We're going to talk about a number of topics, that mitigation, uh, how do we reduce uh, emissions in all of these areas, what are your ideas, what are your solutions, uh, that's going to be really key. Okay, this is the scary slide. So um, when you want to uh, reduce emissions, generally you want to go in this direction. Uh, you may notice that we're going in this direction. So our emissions are going up, not down. So that is very, very bad. Uh, and we've been very transparent about this. Uh, we put out Environment and Climate Change Canada. We put out publicly where our emissions are at. Uh, and we know that we clearly, clearly are going in the wrong direction and we need to bend the curve. We need to be going down. So what have we been doing on climate change? Uh, so someone said to me, well, you we haven't really been doing anything. Well, it's been six months, but I think it's been, oh, we've been, we've been working really hard. Uh, you know, the, the idea is that we get to a place where we have a plan, but I think it's really important that we engage all Canadians. So what was the first thing two days after I got, uh, after I was named cabinet, I was off to Paris. So we uh, worked really hard in Paris to negotiate an ambitious climate agreement. I think we played a really important role. We also did something different from the previous government uh, we believed in climate change, so that was the first thing we did. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing we did uh, was we, uh, we came with, uh, with a, a diverse group of Canadians. We came with Indigenous leaders, we came with youth, we came with, um, we, we came with premiers uh, and, and environment ministers, we came with business, we came with environmental NGOs. Uh, we were there as Team Canada and the way it should be when you tackle climate change. It is not a partisan issue. Climate change is an issue that we all have to be part of. We all have to be doing our individual part and we have to do our part as a society. So that was very good. We worked very hard to get language rec recognizing the rights of indigenous peoples uh, and the role of traditional knowledge. Uh, we also recognized the role that um, subnationals in the UN speak, but really um, uh, provinces uh, and municipalities, the role that they play in helping to tackle climate change. And uh, I was really excited because I was involved in a, in a piece of the agreement where we recognize the role of uh, carbon pricing in markets, uh, which I spent a lot of time talking about because I think pricing pollution, uh, pricing what you don't want, uh, and uh, emphasizing what you do want, uh, which is innovation, clean innovation, is, is really an important part of this. Then we went to, uh, no, we're actually not even finished over there. Oh, I'm just getting started. Um, no, then we, uh, then we went to, uh, we had the state visit uh, with the United States where top of the agenda was taking action on climate change. And in terms of real deliverables, we committed to reducing uh, emissions from uh, methane from oil and gas by 40 to 45 percent. And that is that actually makes a huge difference. If we were to able, if well, that's like taking all the cars off of Canada, uh, off of Ontario, and Quebec, uh, off the roads. Uh, if we can extend that globally, which is certainly something we're pushing for, that would be like closing one third of the coal-fired plants. So that is a, was a really important initiative. We also committed we committed to mission innovation, where we're doubling our our investments in clean tech. Uh, and a number of other regulatory uh, areas where we've aligned with the United States, uh, reducing emissions from heavy duty vehicles. So that was an important piece. Uh, the budget, uh, the greatest budget ever, significant investments uh, in, uh, or historic investments in public transit, clearly part of uh, the puzzle um, in uh, green infrastructure, in, even in um, when it came to social infrastructure. So. Uh, social housing, which is something that I'm strongly advocate for, um, it needs to be energy efficient housing. Why should we be building crappy housing um, for people that need good housing? <laughs> and, and there are also other investments. There's a $2 billion low carbon economy fund to help facilitate uh, actions by the province that will reduce emissions. Uh, there's, I mean, there's investments across the board in clean tech and innovation. Um, so it just showed that our government is extremely committed to taking action on climate change. Yes, just the first step in this budget, um, but we are now, uh, so this is where we're at right now, we're now working on what the plan is going to be. So there was a meeting between the Prime Minister and the Premiers, uh, and they all agreed, all of the Premiers agreed that we needed to meet or exceed our international obligations, that every province had to do their part, that carbon pricing was part of the solution, and that there was a process that was going to be undertaken over the next, over the six, over six month period. And that process would involve working groups uh, in four areas. 
Um, I think that, yeah, so this is, this is where we're at right now. So what are the, what, what is this working group process and what is this all about? We decided that, well, the, the Prime Minister and the Premiers decided that we needed to be serious about this and actually break down what was the, you know, the different pieces of the puzzle. So uh, one working group is on mitigation. So how do we reduce our emissions? Um, and there are, four, there are subgroups uh, in the mitigation sector. So I've already talked about where do we reduce emission, buildings, vehicles, oil and gas. Um, we, we, know the, we know the areas. So there are subgroups in there that are looking at very systematically, province by province, where are we going to get the emission reductions. Uh, there's a working group on carbon pricing. Uh, we have good news in Canada, 80% of Canadians live, in a, live or will live in a jurisdiction where there's a price on carbon, but we need to make sure that there's coverage across the country and we also need to make sure that it's, it's, it's actually incentivizing behavior. So that actually the, the price eventually is increasing so that people you know, are taking this into account, um, taking into account the pollution or, or in fact, I mean, putting it in a more positive way, they're making right choices that will reduce the cost to them um, so that they're reducing emissions. Obviously, business is a key part of that as well. Uh, then clean tech, innovation, and jobs. There's real opportunities, uh, and I think it's really important. I always talk about the environment and the economy going together, and I do that because it's just true. Um, we are moving to a low carbon future. 195 countries have said that. Businesses are realizing that um, China alone is going to need $50 trillion over the next decades in clean investment. So we need to be part of the solution. If we can find solutions here, those are solutions that we can export. Um, and then the last one is adaptation and resilience. Uh, as I said, we're already seeing the impacts of climate change. That's, that's a fact, and we need to take action to reduce it. Flooding, clearly an issue I know that you think about uh, here in Winnipeg, um, but the impacts are across the country and they differ. Um, so we need to be looking at how do we build more resilient communities so that we can withstand the, the impact of a changing climate. Um, okay, so in terms of the process, as I said, so we have the working group process. Uh, we, we, they'll be you know, meeting with different groups, meeting with experts over the next uh, six months. They report um, to uh, ministers, including myself, uh, in, um, in September, early October. Uh, and then the recommendations, we have to present our recommendations to the Prime Minister in, uh, in the fall, just after that. So that is when we will have our plan. But as part of that plan, we need to be hearing from Canadians. And that's why we're doing town halls across the country. We're encouraging groups you don't. For those of you in the back, I feel terrible that, that we can't fit all of you. I mean, I'm excited that there's so many people. I wish we could have you all in the room. But for everyone who's here, go have a, your own. You can download from our uh, website a town hall toolkit. Go do it with your book club. Go do it with your faith group. Go do it with your friends. Go do it with your enemies. I don't know. Get everyone in this. Uh, <laughs> colleagues. Uh, it's important that I would not say they're your enemies. I, like I love everyone. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, just, it, it's just important that we, we get this conversation going and we get momentum around this. That everyone feels like they're part of the solution and they're having discussions about things they maybe haven't really spent a lot of time thinking about this. Um, and then those are all going to be fed into this portal, this website, where we're going to be, we're going through all of the ideas, all of the solutions. As I say, the post is there for everyone. Um, it's going to be really important because the only way, honestly, that we're going to be able to take serious action is if Canadians are behind us. And Canadians are pushing politicians like me, uh, like the Prime Minister, like Premiers, um, like, you know, municipal, uh, municipal leaders, that's the only way that, that we're going to get action. We need to hear from you, we need to hear your ideas, uh, and we all need to be doing this together. Um, so, uh, well now we're, I think this is it, now we're, you're probably so bored of me, so good news. Uh, I am not going to say anything more. Alors, alors je ne vais pas parler en français, est-ce qu'il y a des francophones ici? Oui, alors je m'excuse, mais alors on peut prendre les réponses en, en, en français. Je suis heureuse de prendre les réponses en français, je m'excuse. Mais maintenant, le plan est que nous voulons que vous discutiez à votre table. Nous avons, il semble que vous avez de bons groupes, une bonne diversité ici. Nous avons une bonne discussion et puis nous allons back. Uh, you know, what you discussed to us. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get, if everyone here took time, and we'd probably be here for like a, a weekend. Um, but, you know, we're going to, you know, look for a summary of, uh, a summary of what you discussed. 
Um, and then also, I'm hoping the rapporteur will either take it upon themselves or someone in your group will take it upon yourselves to input to our website, or you can hand it to uh, to volunteers here, uh, and we'll make sure that it gets on to uh, that it gets input, it gets onto the website. So, in terms of um, some of the key questions that we're looking at for discussion. Uh, what have been your own experiences with the impacts of climate change? So what, what have you seen? Um, what are the solutions? Uh, I mean, in, in my group, I would just say, let's make this like a little bit organic. I mean, if you don't want to talk about some of these, don't talk about them. But, I mean, say on the climate change theme, that'd be good. But, uh, <laughs> uh, what are the solutions to reducing greenhouse gases that you would like to see governments, businesses, and communities implement? What are your ideas to both grow the economy uh, and jobs while reducing emissions? What are some ideas to promote innovation and new technologies uh, in our effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? And what can Canada be doing to better uh, adapt to the impacts of climate change and support effective communities in, in particular, uh, well, it says including, but I think in particular indigenous and northern communities? Um, so we'll leave those questions up, uh, and now uh, I want to talk about some of the, the rules. Does that sound good? All right, well, let's get to this. I'm really excited. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name's Clayton Thomas Mueller. I'm with 350.org. Super stoked to be here. Uh, I'm part of the Mitigating Emissions uh, group number one. There's a bunch of us, and there were some really amazing ideas. Uh, you know, one of the no-brainers, obviously, is uh, eliminating federal fossil fuel subsidies and diverting uh, those subsidies into investment in public transportation, high-speed rail lakes between major urban cities, and obviously, no uh, building new fossil fuel infrastructure like tar sands pipeline. so that Canada can meet its 1.5 degree climate target and uh, its commitments to the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Hi there, my name is Alexis, and I'm the Executive Director of the Lake Winnipeg Foundation. Our, our team of discussion focused on rural landscapes, recognizing that there's the biggest potential climate impacts on those landscapes and also the biggest need for adaptation. We see a resilient rural landscape as a patchwork of habitats uh, providing different functions, redefining productivity, not just as agricultural productivity, but also as ecological services and ecosystem services. Uh, that involves pushing beyond the idea of green infrastructure to get to the idea of living infrastructure. Wetlands, boreal forests, prairies are all important for mitigation and for adaptation. We also talked about alternative economic ideas, the idea of the circular economy, the bioeconomy, sustainable economies that are linked to community building. So the idea that there is opportunity in this challenge. Um, we talked about ensuring coherent federal policy between a climate plan, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, and trade policy. Climate change, like water and many other files, is a cross yeah. cutting file. And there's opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our conversation centered around kind of five themes. So first and foremost, we said respecting the jurisdiction and the veto power of Indigenous nations that are standing up against the yeah. 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 local ownership over energy projects, over food economies, uh, supporting communities in uh, in taking ownership over those over those projects, supporting organizations like a key energy uh, that want to make sure that food and energy um, are in the hands of local communities. Uh, we talked about how climate change doesn't stop at Canada's borders. Uh, and we need to ensure that as a nation, we honor our commitments to countries in the global south by supporting their efforts at adaptation uh, and climate change mitigation, as well as supporting knowledge exchanges with countries um, at a global scale. Uh, we talked about data. There's an absence of good projection data. Uh, we need more money for running models, for translating data into useful uh, and, and public venues, um, and for community-based monitoring as well, and making sure that Indigenous knowledge is in that data, and also planning uh, for resilient communities and a gas tax. 
my name is Neil Bailey. Um, we talked about a lot of things. The first thing we probably agreed on wholeheartedly was that we often fail when we try to define another community's priorities. So that um, plays a big role in our presentation and participating in what we are tonight. Um, we talked about the narratives that drive our decisions. We talked about how we need to mitigate consumption um, because otherwise we're just reinvesting the money in something new and that is not a reduction. Um, we, need localized, we need localized visions to carry those narratives and if we want to scale up we need to do that through authentic representation of those communities woven together um, through systems that properly represent them um, and that often the solutions are there within communities that you're not listening to right now. So please do better at engagement. Uh, Sean Loney from the Social Enterprise Center. Um, we, uh, we are suggesting an audit of federal government departments and institutions because they're doing things that are contrary to public objectives, for example. Um, the CMHC uh, makes it very difficult for First Nations to build energy efficient homes with geothermal. In fact, it's discouraged. Uh, INAC subsidizes a northern store and will not subsidize Aki Energy's uh, healthy food operations at Garden Hill. And Clayton, there's we're building pipelines in Manitoba. Manitoba Hydro installs hooks up 25 new houses a day to the natural gas system. Our institutions need to be changed. Thank you. Shannon, and I'm also from the Pig South. Okay. <laughs> uh, we spoke about a lot of the same things that everyone else has spoken about, which means that we all have great ideas, we all feel like. Um, rural locally was a big one. All transit and government vehicles should be electric as a role model for communities. Uh, forestry, we need to replant every forest and more forest protection. For ag, give farmers incentives for ecosystem services that manage climate change. Sorry. Uh, Radically transform zoning for farmers, for farming and municipal planning. Uh, it, it gives fictitious borders around, uh, so we can work on that. Um, our room here is full of converted people, so we need to educate all of our young people, educate the people in our communities and businesses as well. I'm also from South Winnipeg, and I volunteer with the Council of Canadians local chapter. Uh, but I had the pleasure of uh, having a majority of my table from the uh, South St. Boniface Residents Association. Yeah. And they gave me a good ed education on um, metal shredders. Uh, it's called green because we're recycling, uh, but it's actually very dirty. And there's problems with uh, metal dust, particulate material uh, that's potentially carcinogenic. Uh, any process that causes metal to be um, well, it, it creates bad gases in the air. Uh, Hexavalent! And, and, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it points to the Environmental Act uh, not really being, being upheld. Uh, that there are uh, grandfather loopholes put in that allows people to continue polluting. Uh, the inspections are self-regulated and uh, that needs to be covered by government and a bunch of stuff. We have one final table. You get the last word, and I'm going to go to the minister for a second. Thanks, Karen. Okay, pleasure. So, our, uh, I'll start with our last one because everything's been said already. We need our politicians to be brave and make necessary changes. It's urgent and yeah. fossil fuel subsidies to research renewable energy and new energy training. Partner with businesses to promote new technology. Legalize hemp, not marijuana, but hemp. Promote local, sustainable farming, and uh, so, so as to reduce transportation emissions. 
promote conservation, using less energy, subsidizing insulation, legislate energy efficient buildings, promote use of green vehicles uh, such as bikes, legislate electric vehicles. We want Canada be, to be a leader and an innovator. So please, we ask our politicians to be brave. Will you oppose the pipeline? Yeah, I have it. across our country about climate action and why it's the right thing to do, why it's the thing that makes economic sense, why it's going to be great for, uh, it's the thing we need to do for the next generation. I have three kids, I spend a lot of time thinking about what the future is going to be like uh, if we don't act. Uh, and it's not pretty. So uh, I just want to, I just want to, you know, thank you for all coming out. I, I, as I say, I'm just blown away. The one little thing I have is uh, that I thought I'd share that I do have a connection uh, to Winnipeg. I have a cabin. You won't believe this. My family has a cabin outside of Flint Pond, Manitoba. Woo! <laughs> I come through Winnipeg every year and it's always great to be here. You guys are super passionate. Uh, I love it. Uh, keep on pushing us. Make sure you get your ideas out there and talk to your friends and neighbors because I think someone made the point. We have a lot of people in this room. I think all of you believe that we need to take action on climate, but not everyone does. Uh, and if some people are scared about what it means, and of course people need jobs. Uh, that's the reality. But we need to be, you know, we need to be innovating. We need to look at the opportunities. We need to be positive about this. So make sure you spread the word. Uh, and uh, you've got some really great representatives here. Terry uh, is really uh, amazing. Marianne. Uh, really, some really great people um, in uh, representing you in Ottawa, so you should be really proud of them. About the pipeline. Well, so we had a number of elected officials. I wonder if they would stand up so I could recognize. I always believe in recognizing our. There's Wap Canoe and. Oh, boy! Daniel Baker and towering over. And then Janice Woodard was here. Um, any other any other representatives? Oh, James Renault. Thank you for coming over. It's always great when our elected officials come out and I, I certainly like to yeah. recognize them. James Allen oh, James Allen was here. Oh, Good guy. Rob Altmeyer. Rob Altmeyer. <laughs> hey, I started a, a bad trend here. Anyway, um, again, I just want to join the minister in thanking you all. I'm, I'm so proud to come from a, from a community with such an active, intelligent, thoughtful, and uh, passionate uh, folks uh, about climate change and other, other community uh, issues. So thank you so much for coming out tonight. And I think uh, you'll agree with me uh, that uh, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau, made a very good choice when he appointed Catherine as the environment. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Your feedback is very important. I think, Catherine, you mentioned that folks can go on the web. Yeah, sorry, just before you all leave, uh, so you gave us great ideas, but you only gave it in one minute, uh, so you cheated a little bit going backwards, we saw you, but uh, so, uh, we just want to make sure that we do get your input, so if someone in your group wants to be super awesome and actually go to our website, Let's Talk Climate, so does the... 
Thanks everyone. Good night. God bless.